Good morning friends, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. I'm in my kitchen this morning and we've got a lot of irons in the fire <laughs> to say the least. So I just got done putting up some raw milk. Um, we buy milk locally from a friend of mine and so she had a couple extra half gallons and I freeze dried it. Um, it's crazy, it looks so cool. And then I skimmed off the cream. So look at the difference there just between the cream and the milk. So I really wanted to experiment with the milk specifically and reconstitute it because when we end up having an excess amount of milk from our goats, um, I do know there are seasons where you're not gonna have milk. And so I was trying to play around with what that looks like. Um, I've got a massive harvest behind me. I have got uh, two focaccias proofing. So we have friends coming over for dinner tonight. And I have a focaccia in the cast iron. Uh, this is gonna be a garlic and three cheese. And then I have this one over here that is going to be a tomato, basil, and fresh mozzarella. Um, so those look great. I'm making homemade pasta again. So I've got my sourdough starters fed. But I told you guys, this is kind of like that final push for me of like, oh my gosh, I have to preserve all the food. So I harvested some okra and some green beans yesterday. Our green beans are finally starting to really, really put on. Um, and so I've got a nice little harvest here. And actually what I'm gonna be doing with the green beans and the okra is I'm gonna be cutting these up. The okra I'm gonna be cutting up, throwing in the dehydrator. And then I'm gonna be doing all of those uh, peppers. So I started peppers, had them in, now I'm going to be working on the next round. So I thought I would just let you guys kind of hang out with me in the kitchen today and talk through kind of food preservation. Um, I feel like we have been talking about this a lot specifically lately. I feel like a lot of other channels and homesteaders and just friends that we're talking to are talking about this. Now let's talk about food preservation. I'm going to walk with you guys. Um, how our family prepares for stuff, um, and just maybe kind of give you some tips and tricks on if you are wanting to be more prepared, you're wanting to have more food security, what does that look like? How do you go about doing that? So what I am doing here is just cutting them up in these small little circular uh, discs because I found that when I tried to freeze dry the whole pod, we had a hard time getting all of the moisture out. So I'm trying it a little bit different. Um, we did not have the best of luck um, dehydrating the peppers. So that's one thing that did exceptionally well in the freeze dryer. Um, and so I'm just kind of switching around different vegetables, seeing what is the best way of preservation, which kind of brought me to wanting to do this video for you guys. What are the top ways to preserve your food? now? I think there are the top ways <laughs> to preserve your food, maybe the most familiar, um, but then there's a few other things that maybe you need to consider along those lines as well. Like it may be, you know, the preferred method um, of canning, but if you just don't really like canning food or canned food, why would you spend all your time preserving that way? So today I'm gonna share with you some different ways, some of the tried and true, old school, new school ways of preserving your food in case you are new to this. Um, and I know that a lot of us, our summer gardens are wrapping up. I completely acknowledge that. But there's this really, really cool thing that happens in the fall and the winter. One, if you're doing a fall and winter garden, you get to just continue to grow um, and experience new foods. But if you are a beginner gardener and you're only growing that spring and summer garden, you get to spend all fall and winter building your tool belt of knowledge. Now, knowledge is power. I will say this again and again and again. You can grow all the food, but if you don't know how to preserve it, then you've wasted your time, right? You can do all of these things, but if you don't have the full grasp on all the steps required, it's one thing to grow, you know, 100 pounds of tomatoes a week, but if I don't know how to put up and preserve that 100 pounds of tomatoes I harvested every week in the summer, what am I growing that much for? And so it is good to not only know what it is that you plan on growing, what it is that you've already grown, but how you wanna preserve that. What is the technique and the method that you wanna do? Now, growing up, um, both of my grandparents canned in a large way. Um, you know, my dad's parents had a massive garden. Um, I, I never quite realized how much of an influence that had on me as a young kid until I started writing my book. 
and I started telling my story, right, about how I got into gardening, and I realized that my papa Kenneth played a huge role in that. Um, and at the time, I hated it, right? Like, I hated going out there and picking weeds or having to help him can jelly. Um, but now as an adult, it's a really sweet memory I have, and I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that I have that. Um, so canning is obviously, you know, um, a preferred way of preserving, one of probably the oldest. I think fermentation is the oldest technique in preserving food. Um, so that's one way. You can can your food. You can do the pressure canner. Uh, for certain vegetables, you can do water bath canning. Now, they are going to last for a period, but these aren't going to last forever. Food cans still go bad. You know, I just had to throw out a bunch of pickled okra that I want to say I canned years and years ago. Now, so ideally when you are preserving these things too, you want to think about storing them for a period of time. You know, and, and if you're wanting like that long, long term food preservation from like a um, preparedness or a prepping standpoint, then there's going to be different options, right? So if you're canning your food, it's one of those things that you're going to have to use within a certain amount of time. They're not going to just last forever. Um, if you're wanting something that's going to last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, then the freeze dryer is going to be the way to go because you're able to store things in these mylar bags and you put an oxygen packet in there they are sealed uh, this will last for years and years and years and so that's another thing when i'm telling you you need to be thinking through your goals what is your goal just to you know have enough food for your family grow enough food in the summer to last your family through the winter and then you can do it all over again if so canning is a good option um, that will kind of last you seasonally and I mean if you can food it will last you longer than a season But it's not a foolproof, you know 10-year plan <laughs> then you have fermentation which has been around for ages now when we think about fermentation now um, a lot of times we are fermenting the food on the counter and then we are putting it in the refrigerator. Now, if you have some sort of cold storage, if you have a root cellar, uh, we have a freezer that we have turned into a cooler uh, for flowers in the summer, and then it will be a uh, cold storage for us throughout the winter for fermenting. So again, fermenting is one of those things that it's lasting, you know, about a year or so, depending on how, if you're doing it in the fridge, it's gonna last in the fridge for about a year. But the idea too is that you're you're utilizing it. You're not just preserving for the sake of preserving and then you never touch it. And I will say, and just being fully transparent, when I was starting out learning about gardening and preserving, I would can all of these things. I would preserve all these things and we never touched them. They literally went bad in our pantry. And I tell you that because I know I am not the only one who has experienced that, who has canned pickles that you had to toss out in the compost or, you know, pickled okra that I had sitting literally for almost eight years in my pantry shelf. It's moved three houses with me and we never ate it. So the idea is put up things that you want to utilize. Put up things that you're going to the grocery store and buying, that you're buying online from Azure Standard. You know, we go through uh, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, tomato sauces all the time in our dishes. So I am putting up a lot of that so that I know I don't have to buy any of that throughout the winter. I am secured in that way. And so I will say I do think that makes a massive difference. If you're canning, the base of that is going to be water. If you're fermenting, um, the salt is the preservation. So freezing is another technique you can preserve your food, which I feel like is becoming wildly popular. <laughs> I know so many people where their number one way of preservation is through freezing um there you know it's a great easy option you essentially would do what i'm doing here chop it up you just freeze it and then once you freeze it on these trays you would then transfer it to you know some sort of uh, freezer bag and throw it in your freezer so that's a great option super easy really kind of hands off if you will um the only thing with that is you have to be able to have the ample amount of freezer space now we have got a lot of freezers um however you know we just got done processing a few hogs uh, we buy beef by uh, we buy half a beef at a time so we don't have just ample amount of freezer space to be able to store all of our vegetables however i've got a massive pantry with more space than I 
like and need. We also have another storage area downstairs in our laundry room where we do a lot of our other bulk foods. So when I think about the space, the necessary space I need, uh, for us freezing doesn't you know, make a lot of sense because I just don't have a lot of freezer space. I don't wanna to have to invest in buying another freezer. All right, so let's run through. You've got canning, that's water bath canning, pressure canning. You've got freeze drying, dehydrating, just regular freezing. You have fermenting. Those are kind of just like the overview ways you can preserve. Hopefully, you know, during this video, you found one that you think, oh yeah, that, that sits with me. But it's not just thinking about, there's a, there's a few different things to think about when you think about what preserving technique is the one I'm gonna choose. One, think about what it is that you're using. Are you buying canned foods or are you buying frozen vegetables? Um, try to, you know, uh, copy what it is that you're already doing. Because when we think about food security, food preservation, for me, it's not just about stockpiling food. It's about setting my family up for success in the case that we don't have access to X, Y, or Z. So one, I can grow all the food, like I said, that's one component in this. But if I grew all this food and I canned it all and we never bought canned food, then if I didn't have that available to me, would I actually pull from something that my family's not used to eating in a way they're not used to eating it? Granted, if it was, you know, uh, an emergency situation, of course we would eat, but the idea is why are you preserving food in a way that you're not buying food? If you're thinking about food preparedness in a way of just like cutting down your cost, these are also gonna be really, really important things to consider. And so I think that when we're moving into these slower months, this is really that sweet spot for you to figure out you know, which way do you like to preserve food? Which way are you buying food? Which is a skill you'd wanna know? You know, if you wanna learn about fermenting, um, I think that that's a great tool to have in your tool belt. But if your family hates the taste of fermented foods, I probably wouldn't preserve all of my food in you know, the resource of fermentation because it does taste different. It is very much so an acquired taste. And so for us, I think we do a healthy balance of all things, right? We're fermenting a good deal. Um, we are dehydrating. We are um, freeze drying. We do can. So like we can our chutneys and our tomato sauces and our diced tomatoes. So we dehydrate our cherry tomatoes and we top it with oil and that's a way to preserve it. And we'll add that into different dishes as well. With our okra, we are dehydrating it for a snack, but we could also throw it in soups and gumbos throughout the winter. Our green beans, we're freezing, we're dehydrating, so there's a lot of versatility there. Um, with our cabbage, we're freeze drying that for winter soups. We're fermenting that for kimchi and sauerkraut. And so you can see, I'm not growing a huge wide array of vegetables, but how I am choosing to preserve those vegetables, I am adding diversity in that. So I can grow the okra and I can only ferment the okra. And then I'm limited on what I can do with that fermented okra. Or I could grow the okra, I could ferment some, I could dehydrate some, I could freeze dry some, and I could pickle some, and there I have all these different ways to utilize this okra, which for me is where the magic really is. So while you are in your house this winter, maybe just preparing for that spring garden. You know, I know January, February, that's the time that we all really start to roll our sleeves up and we're like, all right, what are we gonna do in the garden for the springtime? I would highly encourage you to be thinking through your preserving techniques, especially if food preparedness and food preservation is at the top of why you're wanting to grow a garden. Now, if you're wanting to grow a garden and it's just for, you know, it's a therapeutic thing that you do and it's a hobby and if you get a few, you know, vegetables to use fresh in your kitchen, that's enough for you. That's fine. Let that be enough for you. But I know that I'm talking to a lot of people <laughs> on a weekly basis and a lot of people are worried about their food. Uh, they're worried about access to food. A lot of people are fed up with the broken food system. This isn't a topic that we discuss a lot, but I think we probably should. I think all of us should be having those conversations, asking where is our food coming from? Why is the food system so broken? How do we each play a part in fixing that? And it may just look like fixing it for your family. That's what it looks like for me. It looks like fixing it for my family and then teaching and educating people on how they can fix it for their families too. 
each of those small impacts makes a massive impact in the long run. You know, it's not that I can change the world or you can change the world, but collectively all those pieces come together and the impact we can have is mighty. For me, it's educating people and letting them know there's more than one way to grow a food. There's more than one way to preserve a food. If you don't like what okra tastes like plain, try fermenting it, right? Some of these staples, if you don't like tomatoes, try, try utilizing that tomato differently and see if it takes on a different texture or a different flavor that you do like to where you can grow more food, have a more diverse diet, have a more diverse pantry, and become less reliant in the long run. Um, and for me, I am in no means a prepper. Um, that's not why I like to do this. I like to know where my family's food comes from. And I would like for it all to come from me. <laughs> um, I would like to be the one responsible for growing their food, preserving their food, and ultimately teaching that next generation that this is how it was supposed to be. This is how it was long before we came around. Hopefully this is how it'll be long after we're gone. For me, it's about teaching my kids. We don't grow food because we're scared. <laughs> we don't grow food because we're afraid we're not gonna find it in the grocery store. We grow food because this is how it was intended to be. It's about being connected to nature. It's about being connected to our food. It's about playing a role in every single step of that process, taking the seed, planting it, harvesting it, preserving it, cooking it. It's all full circle. And for me, that's a message that I find very, very important. That's a message that I will go to my grave <laughs> teaching and preaching and just really encouraging people that this way of life, yeah, it might be a little bit more work. Yeah, sometimes people might think that you're the crazy person who grows all their own food and, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, is you are literally setting yourself up, not only you know, in a physical way by growing all this food and preserving it, you are just continuing to build upon your skill sets and what you can teach someone else. And for me, those are things that are that are really, really valuable. You know, it's one thing if I know how to grow food, it's another thing if I know how to grow food and I can teach 10 other people how to do it too. And so I really wanna encourage you guys as we're approaching the new season, figure out what food you wanna grow for your garden. Figure out new preserving techniques. Figure out your goals. What is your goal behind growing a garden? What is your goal behind food preservation, food preparedness. What does that look like for you? And for some, it does look like growing the food. For others, it looks like buying bulk on as your standard and caning enough for their own family. That's still a really sustainable way to go about this um, if you're not in a place where you can grow your own food. And so just know you have options. Figure out what those options are. And most importantly, I encourage you all, don't be driven to do this out of a place of fear. Be driven to do this out of a place where you get to have control over this, right? I get to have control over what I grow, what my family eats, how I stock my pantry. That's my choice. It's the choice that me and Nathan get to make for our family and that feels good. No one else should dictate what I can and I can't grow, how much I can and I can't put up, the availability and the access I have to food. That should never be in question for any of us. And the way we kind of take control of that a bit more is by being a part of that whole process, right? Starting the seed, planting the seed, harvesting the fruit of the vegetable, preserving it, stocking our pantry, supporting another farmer um, who is doing those other steps for us, buying from Azure Standard, doing that. We all get to literally just reach out and take control of that. And so if you're in a place where you feel like you're lacking control of you know, food for your family or you're uncertain about what that looks like or you're like some of us and you're just like, man, this is a broken system. How do I play a part in fixing this? And you grow a seed or you educate someone or you encourage someone to start a garden or maybe you walk alongside and you co-farm with somebody or maybe you have canning days and y'all put up together. There's a lot of different ways this can look like. But I do think it's important that we are at a place where we take the steps to do it and we don't wait. I think that the longer we wait, the more the issue is gonna get bigger and bigger. But the sooner that we take initiative of it and we decide to invoke change, that's when things really start happening. So I hope this video kind of just walked you through some of the ways you can preserve food. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say, um, and just encourages you guys to really think through your goals. Um, this is a great time to be able to do this if you're not growing year round, and really just evaluate. What do you wanna do? And don't be limited by what you think you can't do, because I promise you, doing something 
is better than doing nothing. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.